he's a hard worker. His tenacity to want to be better and want to be better than other people, and that made me respect him a lot. His mindset is just to never give up and never die attitude, and I think that shows in his game and it shows us who he is as a person. And I think some of the stuff he's going through in his past this has really driven him. Biggie was born in Indianapolis. It was kind of an unstable situation. His biological father had a, a substance abuse problem and then that affected uh, the rest of the family. Um, and his mom, uh, you know, she was doing the best that she could, but when you have no money, it's just a tough situation. So they moved a lot. And we would go one place for like two years and go back for the other place for two years. Most of the time we would just catch the Greyhound. We would just get on the bus and then go ride, probably about like two or three days. He spent most of his time in Utah, Salt Lake City area. But still it was, you know, in and out of homeless shelters, different apartments. He saw probably a lot of drugs, a lot of abuse, a lot of hopelessness. When you don't know when your next meal is gonna come from, then when you get a meal or you get an opportunity to eat, you eat as much as you can possibly eat because you don't know when you're gonna eat again. I met him when he was six and I would keep in touch with the family. His oldest brother called me and asked me if I would allow him to come and, and stay with me. And he said, if, if you don't come get him now, then he's gonna end up going down the wrong path. It meant a lot. I feel like it was a good situation for both of us because he had got, just gone through something with the divorce and I had just gone through a lot. And I feel like we really helped each other. He gave me guidelines and gave me structure and just gave me consistency. And that was the biggest things I felt like I was missing. A lot of people come up to me and say, oh, you've been a blessing. They try to pat me on the back for to say what I've done. He's been more of a blessing to me than I have been to him. Caleb, he's about 6'9", and he's about 247 pounds. It's my understanding he has the second lowest body fat on the team. But when he moved in with me, he was 6'2", 360. He was fat. I mean, just to put it blunt, he was one of the fattest kids I had ever seen. I bought an extra large box of Wheaties, a gallon of milk. I told him, when you wake up in the morning, get you some breakfast. So when I got up in the morning, the box of cereal was gone. The gallon of milk was gone. And I was like, well, what happened? He said, well, you told me, you know, to get some breakfast and eat. I said, yeah, but I'm in a bowl of cereal, <laughs> not the box of cereal. He couldn't run up and down the court two times. And so I took him to a heart specialist. They checked him out and said his heart was fine. And once they told me he was healthy, then we put these drills in. So we would just go to the gym, put me through something that is really easy now, but back then I felt like it was a whole lot. We'd get up every morning, we'd, get, we'd do cardio, and we'd go to the gym, and we'd start doing basic fundamental drills. Whatever I told him to do, he did it. And he would always finish whatever I told him to do. I knew he was special then when he, he wouldn't quit. And once he started seeing some results, it just made him more and more hungry. And hungry for success, not necessarily for food. We still do the same drills today that we did then. I still work with him because he asked me to, and that's what it takes to be great. There's still some doubters out there, but just like when he couldn't jump over a piece of paper, I was telling him since then, you're the best power forward in the world. I still believe that today. Here on the road to West Lafayette, this thing ought to be something. Let's go, 
something for your life, man. I don't know what will, man. Hey, 40 minutes. Don't be so three. One, two, three. It's a big game for both ball clubs. Got a couple of ranked teams, and they're both coming in on this short prep time. And of course, out of Mac Arena, and this place is packed, no doubt. Here we go. Rebound, Hammonds to the corner, three on the way, bullseye, Davis! Time to win the ball, Purdue the lead. Edwards, into Hammonds, turns on Costello, outside jumper by Davis. Good again, it's another triple! Purdue on offense, he turns on his man, puts it up, score! Here comes Harris with the ball, and he missed the slam! Wow, here come the Boilermakers. Davis for another three ball, another big one. The long ball has powered the Boilermakers. The big guys aren't getting it done. The guys outside the line are. Pass Costello is in front of everybody. Uh oh, here they come. And they shoot the ball, another three right now. He got it! He got it! Are you kidding me? Six point play by Valentine. He's got 21, and we got a basketball game. All of a sudden, Mackey Arena. Ellis Davis up. We are tied at 50 down. And the shoe has come back from 18 down. Now Valentine as he wants to go down the lane. Here he goes, scoops that away, got it. And then they shoes up by four. What a game at Mackey Arena. It is fighting, kicking, scratching, elbow, and punching, whatever it takes. We go down on the half court. Edwards. Off and gives it to Swanigan to score. 141 to go at 72 70. Swanigan guarded by Davis. Swanigan turns, puts it up, scores! Tie game at 72. One certainly would think Michigan State's taking a final shot out of regulation. Inbounding Michigan State, 9.7 seconds left. They got it to Valentine, eight seconds left. Valentine stops and fires and misses. Rebound Davis. He throws it down court. We're going to go to overtime. 72 all. Swanigan turns. Spins. Threw it away. Another turnover on Swanigan. Here comes Michigan State quickly down. Through traffic. They left him alone and he missed the dunk. Oh, about that, Denzel Valentine missing a tomahawk. 2.25 left. Now to him, jump hook. Good! It's a free for all yes. out there. It's all guts right now as both teams are worn out. Puts it up, made it, and he was fouled! Bucket counts! 21 seconds left, Purdue by two. Valentine between the circles. Valentine with the ball. Valentine turns, drives inside, puts it up, scores! 81 all. Purdue led by as many as four in this overtime period. Time to play great defense here and not foul, force a tough shot. 6.7 seconds left. Boilermakers send it in to Hammonds. Hammonds gives it off there to Davis. Foul. And he fouled him. Davis was fouled by Valentine, believe it or not. Wow. Two shots for Davis, foul line right. It's up there. Good. Purdue leads by one. Well, and this is the big one because if you miss, they can easily dribble the length of the floor in four seconds and make a layup. Here comes the second shot from Rafael Davis. Foul line right. It's on the way. 
No good. Battle for the rebound. It's okay. on the floor. Purdue got the ball. And it's over. It's over. Purdue wins. 82. 81. As A.J. Hammonds secured the rebound on the sideline. What a great win after blowing a big lead coming back. In overtime, taking care of business. No water right here. Look, bro. Alright, I'll take that. If it is, come on. No, I'm not in this. You by yourself. Get out of here. But you let that screw not take your fire away. Okay? Don't let it take your fire away. All right? I love you.